We saw earlier this week uh, them launch a strike in the Donbas region, uh, and they actually hit a provisional military base in Russia. And so initially the Russian uh, Ministry of Defense said there were roughly 60 soldiers that were killed. Now, this that's a large number for any of the Ukrainian strikes. We heard the Ukrainians say the number of wounded and killed could be as high as 700. Mm -hmm. We've heard, uh, you know, some reporting in the U.S. that U.S. officials believe the numbers could be between two and 500. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a huge number of Russian casualties to take in a single strike. Right. Uh, and we've seen some reporting that suggests uh, Russian officials actually blame this on the soldiers whom they say were using personal cell phones uh, against, you know, policy mm -hmm. and their location was given away. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, we're getting close to a year of the Russian war against Ukraine. There may be some impetus to head toward the negotiating table, but there are some major obstacles in terms of there being really even any talks between Russia and Ukraine. What are some of the things that could keep them from even beginning this discussion? Absolutely. So one thing to note is President Erdogan of Turkey has been a, a mediator a lot of times throughout this war. Uh, being right. the person that President Zelensky or President Putin can speak to, uh, who can communicate for the other side. And Turkey is a NATO ally, but is generally considered to be closer to the current Russian government than really anybody else in NATO. Absolutely. And so earlier this week, uh, President Erdogan spoke to both Zelensky and Putin, and President Putin told him that he would be open to going back to the negotiating table or going to the negotiating table as long as Ukraine was willing to acknowledge the uh, current borders is what he phrased it as. Uh, and what he means by it is that uh, is the territories that Russia annexed, uh, and in addition to Crimea, which they've uh, occupied for eight years now, nine years right. now. Right. And so uh, we've already heard sort of this con this sort of conversation, this back and forth many times now, and President Zelensky, uh, you know, and his government has said, you know, they're not interested in negotiating if it means giving up, you know, their lands. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, while President Putin has expressed this interest, uh, it really feels, you know, another example of them just sort of missing the mark, not being able to get there. Right. Uh, but time will tell. And we also uh, heard this week President Putin uh, put out an announcement to the to his forces to take a, you know, a 36 hour halt uh, for those who are celebrating Christmas in the Orthodox uh, Christian religion, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the first week of January. And so. Even though he put, he went out and sit and put that statement out, we saw Ukrainian leaders already very quickly, you know, respond skeptically that anything would change in this 36-hour period. Uh, now this could be a sign of, uh, you know, some acknowledgement moving forward of ways to work together. But the, ter the territorial concessions are a major sticking point because Ukraine regards this as the whole reason Russia invaded in the first place. So they're essentially going to be rewarded for their invasion if they get to keep annexed territory. At the same time, there are a lot of people, including even Western allies of Ukraine, who don't think it's realistic that all of the territory, territory that Russia seized would ever be given back. Absolutely, a big part of this is you know what's happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen uh, a lot of these territories that Russia's claimed to annex uh, regain, go under you know Ukrainian control again, mm -hmm. uh, but there's still a lot of fighting on the ground. We've heard U.S. officials uh, characterize a lot of the fighting in a lot of the eastern territory that's sort of disputed uh, going on as vicious. We've heard it use, them use words like intense. And so there's so much fighting going on uh, that you're right, it really is hard to see a, a world in which Ukraine is, is able to drive Russia out fully and completely from all the territories uh, that they say are theirs. Mm -hmm. So the United States and Germany have given Ukraine new military aid. I believe this is the first real aid package of, of, the, uh, of the new year. But th what are some of the things that they've done to sort of help the Ukrainian war effort, the latest things? So that the latest done? thing, and as you, as you know, the U.S. comes out with these aid packages almost every two weeks, it right. seems like. Mm -hmm. And so every time they sort of tailor them to what Ukraine's needs are in the moment and going forward. Uh, and as we've seen, the war has, you know, taken, uh, made some changes and some shifts on the battlefield. Uh, and, you know, Ukraine has required different weapons at different times. Uh, but we heard earlier earlier this week that, you, uh, that the U.S. and Germany would be providing Ukraine with tanks. Mm -hmm. And so it really is the first time that the U.S. is providing them with, with these weapons or, you know, these vehicles. And so it's, it meets a request that President Zelensky has been asking for for months now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does show a new stage in U.S. support for Ukraine. 
Mm -hmm. So the Ukrainians have had some success pushing back against the latest Russian offensives. There was a lot of concern that as winter rolled around, <coughs> especially given the Russian attacks on Ukrainian power grids, that winter would be used, as has been said, as a sort of weapon of mass destruction. But the Ukrainians have recently had some successes against the Russians. Absolutely. And so one important aspect of this whole thing is that uh, over the last week or so, it's actually been unusually warm in Ukraine, which has taken a lot of the burden off their energy grid, as you said, which has been, uh, you know, Russia's primary target for the last couple months now. Right. Um, but so moving forward, um, these tanks will um, could provide a big difference in terms of how Ukraine can operate. And so we saw earlier this week uh, them launch a strike in the Donbas region. Uh, and they actually hit a provisional military base in Russia. And so initially the Russian uh, Ministry of Defense said there were roughly 60 soldiers that were killed. Now, this that's a large number for any of the Ukrainian strikes. We heard the Ukrainians say the number of wounded and killed could be as high as 700. Mm -hmm. We've heard, uh, you know, some reporting in the U.S. that U.S. officials believe the numbers could be between two and 500. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a huge number of Russian casualties to take in a single strike. Right. Uh, and we've seen some reporting that suggests uh, Russian officials actually blame this on the soldiers whom they say were using personal cell phones uh, against you know, policy mm -hmm. and their location was given away. Mm -hmm. Now we also heard uh, that there were, there were reports that um, them housing additional ammunition in these buildings could have caused second, uh, secondary uh, explosions, which could have contributed to the destruction and, you know, the casualty count. So drones provided by Iran have become a really big part of the Russian war effort against Ukraine. And when Zelensky was in the United States before Christmas, uh, obviously talking about air defense systems was a very important part of what the United States and the West was going to do to help them defend themselves. D the drone attacks are still ongoing and happening on a, on a pretty regular basis. Absolutely, they are. And so we heard uh, from President Zelensky that uh, Russia launched uh, more than 80 in the first two days of the new year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, one thing that has changed is the Ukrainians are getting better at using the U.S. and Western systems designed and provided to them specifically to you know, combat these Iranian drones. Uh, we've also seen some reporting in the U.S. Uh, that these drones are actually uh, made up of US components from U.S. Uh, companies. Now, those companies aren't doing this intentionally, but, you know, we've heard that uh, the White House is looking into this. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.